at me, Mike. Look at me. <laughs> By the way, I'm the hack here, Corey. I don't know if you know that or not. So Mike's wow. the stick. I'm the hack. I, 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 they're going to know the mustache. There's a lot about you that people know just from... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so our, our question wasn't unique. <laughs> That's okay. I don't mind talking about it. I'd rather yeah. talk about that than something bad that happened. So I, I'm quite, quite happy to talk about it. You are a bulldog. Yeah, I know. I'm not a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys ready? All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Stick and Hack Show, a sophisticated and brilliant look into the world of golf from a stick and a hack. Now, your hosts, Mike Ryan and Adam Grubb. All right, everybody, welcome in. This is the Stick and Hack Show. I'm your host, the hack, Adam Grubb. That is Mike Ryan, the stick right there. Mike, uh, good afternoon. How are you? Super, buddy. How are you, man? I'm awesome. Um, so we have Mark Amira to uh, kick off season for uh, premiere, we and we are moving right down the line of awesomeness here and major champs. Uh, <laughs> the guest today of the Stick and Hack Show, quite possibly the greatest golf show in the free world, uh, from the greatest golf club in the world, of course, Stick and Hack. The guest today is Mr. Corey Pavin, pro golfer, major winner, actor in 10 Cup, past Ryder Cup captain, and now on the Stick and Hack and Show, Mike, uh, Corey Pavin is on the program today. How does that make you feel? I am super excited, dude. You have no idea. We, we have seemed to hit the, the, uh, the mother load here of, uh, of major winners, which is always great. But these are golfers that are still golfing today. And that, that showcases to the uh, longevity of some of these athletes' careers in golf. Because you you're not talking to a, to a uh, mid-50s uh, NBA basketball player a- anymore, right? You're, uh, but in golf, uh, they are still, in, in, in some cases, at the at prime of, of some of their careers so it's going to be very exciting to talk to him. He's Ryder Cup captain. He was on uh, multiple Ryder Cup teams, uh, as well as the uh, the classic U.S. Open victory, um, which we'll talk to him about as well. And just to hear a little bit more about his life and, and, and times as Corey Pavin is the guest here on the Stick and Axe show. But first up, let's talk about dogs, Mike. Now, that's uh, you like dogs, Love right? Dogs. Love dogs. Yeah, of course. Right. So who is Presswick Eaton? Well, I don't know. He's some I British had no idea guy. until you wrote this. <laughs> He's some British guy. But back in the early uh, 1630s, Mr. Eaton wrote a letter to a friend of his, George Wellingham, in London. In that letter, Presswick requested some items from George. Presswick needed a few pounds of tobacco, some pipes, his bottles replenished with the best liquor, and two good bulldogs. As far as we know, this is the first official reference to the slobbery, broad-chested canine. The Pooches got the name Bulldog for their use in a barbaric old sport known as bull baiting. Now, I'll spare you the details, Mike. It's terrible. It's yep. an inhumane form of entertainment using dogs and large bovine and was banned, rightfully so, in 1835 by the British Parliament. I'm sure the Stick and Act listeners at this point in the show are going, what the hell is happening? I'll get to it. Everybody <laughs> calm down. Everybody stay in it. I'll get to it. Though the namesake sport is no longer, bulldogs have endured. It took time to breed out their original aggressive nature, but the American Kennel Club describes the modern bulldog as equitable, kind, resolute, and courageous, and demeanor should be pacifist and dignified. Still, because of their appearance and background, bulldogs maintain a reputation for being tenacious, independent, and proud. After World War I, the Marines took on the bulldog as their mascot named Chesty. The Corps is currently on Chesty 15. The Brits learned in the bull to- uh, leaned into the bulldog after World War II for his resemblance to Churchill, and given the dog's traits and traditions, it's no surprise the Bulldog is annually one of the most popular collegiate mascots around the country as well. The Bulldog sends a message. So why are we talking about dogs on a golf show, Mike? <laughs> no, you know. Yeah, I know. I'm going to explain it anyway. All Today's right. guest has a resume so long we can't fit it all in and have time for the show. He's originally from Southern California. He owns 28 professional golf victories, including 15 PGA Tour titles and the 1995 U.S. Open. He's been the PGA Player of the Year. He's competed in Ryder Cups. He's captained the Ryder Cup. He won two gold medals. And his nickname back in playing days was, that's right, the Bulldog. Stick and Act Nation, welcome in Mr. Corey Pavin. Mr. Pavin, how are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I I guess I'm a Bulldog, I suppose, right? (laughs) (laughs) uh, That is what we're told. Uh, That is what we're told. 
Now you probably heard uh, have heard that that story before. Maybe not that specific story. I don't know if anyone's heard that specific story before. But the the specific bulldog reference. Uh, just before we go any further, uh, do we have that right? I mean, the, what people call you that. Is that a thing? Is that does that even make sense to you today and back in your playing days? Yeah, yeah. I I got that nickname a while ago. Uh, back in uh, I guess it'd be the early '90s. Uh, that moniker uh, was put upon me. <laughs> Well, our, our research team has also indicated that you hold a very cool record. Now, this is lowest strokes needed to complete nine holes. Now, I have a very similar record, the opposite, <laughs> the most strokes. Uh, but the lowest strokes needed to complete nine holes in a PGA event at 26. You were eight under after, after nine holes. Uh, the question, Corey, is what? Is that possible? <laughs> is that is that a question yeah, or a an question. Ex expletive? Um, yeah, it's both. It's both. You, you choose. Yeah. It's, uh, I didn't actually know that I had shot a 26. I knew I was eight under, but um, I, I didn't realize that it was a par 34 nine holes. So um, I found out later that it was a standalone record. And it, and that was, what, 2006. And it's still, still a standalone record. There's a lot of guys that have shot 27. And yeah. quite a few of them came up to me afterwards and were not happy with me. <laughs> they did not like that they were off the, the first page of the record book, I guess. But, uh, um, you know, Andy North was one of them who was playing in the tournament. And, and he said, man, you just took me off the record book. And I said, in my nice bulldoggy way, I said, well, that's just too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, play better. Uh, yep. Imagine, imagine Mike having somebody come into the clubhouse and you say, hey, "How are you playing today?" And everybody always answers the same way, right, Mike? Ah, yeah. You know, oh, yeah, we're you know. Yeah, we're... some good, nah. some bad. Yeah, I made under. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been able to say that ever in my life, but. Um, <laughs> Corey, let's get right into the Ryder Cup stories. Uh, you know, we're a month removed from a U.S. victory, but when you when you were captain in 2010, we fell a point short to the Europeans. Do you remember every moment of those days as captain, or was it kind of a blur for you? Well, I, I remember you know, most of the stuff that happened during the week. Uh, you know, there, there's tons of stuff that happens for two years leading up to it, yeah. um, and I'm too old to remember them all. But, uh, you know, the competition itself is, is always – you know, the, the meat and potatoes of it. So, you know, that, that was a lot of fun for me. You know, I enjoyed doing it. It was a great honor to be captain. That's for sure. Um, you know, doing the pairings, uh, you know, watching the guys play. Um, it was, it was a pretty exciting week, uh, to say the least. And, you know, we just don't get to do things like that very often. I, I'm not even sure how many captains there's been now, maybe like 28 or nine or something. So it's a, it's, a, it was a huge honor, uh, to be selected, to be captain and, you know, I, I did the best I could and got the guys ready to play. And it's unfortunate we fell the point short, but uh, we made it pretty exciting on the last day because I think we were we were three or four points down going into the into the uh, singles, and we got within the last match. It came down to the last match, so it was pretty exciting stuff. You know, Corey, I remember back. Uh, you were a part of a, another great Ryder Cup team uh, in the War on the Shore, and uh, I remember there was like this, it was, I guess a controversy that you wore a camo hat. <laughs> I remember yes. this. I always felt like it was completely blown out of proportion. How, how, what was your perspective on that? When, when, when that all happened? Yeah. Well, that was interesting. You know, you have to remember when it was. So it was, as you said, 1991, yeah. um, you know, the, the Iraq was happening. Yeah. Um, and basically what the camo thing was, was supporting the troops, uh, which was actually a coalition. And, you know, Europe, <laughs> Europe was part of that coalition. So people are going to interpret things the way they want to. But, um, you know, they thought, well, you know, it's a war, you know, we're battling, you know, and that's why I'm wearing it. Um, I thought it was kind of a cool hat, actually. And, and uh, it was really uh, in support of the troops uh, overseas. And it got blown out of proportion. Somebody said something about it. You know, you know, being a war playing the Ryder Cup, but that had really nothing to do with it. Uh, Dave Stockton was our captain, and you know he ordered these hats. He said, "If you want to wear it, you can wear it." And you know, Dave's a big hunter, so he just thought they were cool, and he wanted to probably have them to go hunting in. Um, and I thought it was fun too. You know, I I thought it was, you know, in a way, the Ryder Cup can be a 
I'd say it's more of a battle, a battle amongst um, sort of friends. Um, so it got blown out of proportion a lot. And I think the Europeans got upset that we were wearing it. Uh, Steve Pate and I both wore it. Stockton actually wore a, a hat with a camouflage on it, too. And uh, nobody ever said anything about him wearing it. But, you know, if you're a player, you're under a, a little more scrutiny, I guess. That was the uh, the last great hat controversy uh, right before Bri- <laughs> right before uh, until Bryson came, hit the scene and had his ridiculous hat. Um, so there have been two major hat controversies in, uh, in golf history, I guess. Uh, so let's go to the U.S. Open, Corey. Uh, Corey Pavin, the guest here of the Sick and Act Show. Corey, you didn't just win the U.S. Open. Uh, you won the U.S. Open at Shinnecock Hills. Uh, you won the U.S. Open beating Greg Norman. And you won the U.S. Open in dramatic fashion on 18. It's every kid's dream to hit a major putt, uh, a sinking putt, to, to win a U.S. Open or win a major. Uh, but you had a, you had a near-perfect shot. I call it near-perfect because it didn't go in the hole, right, uh, which I'm sure was the plan from 234 out, uh, was to uh, hit it into the hole. But you had a near-perfect shot to five feet on 18, the uh, the the four wood, um, I, I remember. Uh, well, I don't remember it. I'll be honest with you, Corey. I didn't watch it, but uh, I think I was twelve. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I remember um, it very well. <laughs> you weren't born. You were, You might not yeah, have been born I, yet. I, I don't, don't know. know. Uh, but I read that you were going to go with a four iron and then or a three iron and then you then you switched to the last second and it turned out to be the perfect club for you. Uh, it set you up for then the U.S. Open victory uh, and you and your major. Uh, take us back to that to that moment and, and all of those things lining up for for your moment as a U.S. Open champion. Yeah, well, you know, at that point, I think I was at sea. It was 95. So I was 35 years old and I'd won 13 times at that point, but never a major. So uh, it was certainly on my my list of things to accomplish. And, and I hadn't done it yet. So I was uh, very keen on trying to win a major championship. Uh, and get it done soon because I was getting a little bit older. Uh, but you know, when I got to 18, I was I was actually one up on Greg. He was a couple of holes behind me, and you know, when I got up to the to the shot, uh, Eric, my caddy, and I, you know, we got the yardage, and and the conversation was a very simple one. Uh, it was you know, I at the time I had actually had a two iron in the bag, and I said, Eric, can I get a two iron there? And he said, No which was a great answer. It was definitive. Uh, and I said, what do you think? It's a forward. And he goes, yeah, absolutely. It's a forward. So that, it was a very quick conversation, a very decisive conversation. And there was no doubt. So uh, I just got up, went through my routine uh, that I'd done all week, uh, made sure I was ready to hit the shot and just got up and hit the shot. And the you know, second I hit it, I knew it was pretty good. And, uh, you know, I'm, uh, you've probably seen the video, yeah. but I've seen it a couple times. Uh, you know, I had to hit, I could see the top of the flag, but I had to hit it over a little bit of a hill. So when I hit the shot, I ran up the hill so I could watch it land. Uh, Cause you know, it was a fairly important <laughs> shot like, in my life and, you know, I watched it land and roll up and, you know, all I could see was the ball and the pin. It looked like it might actually go up and go in and it broke a little bit off to the right at the last minute and went about, you know, I guess about five feet short right of the hole um, it wasn't a guaranteed win, uh, at that point, but it was in pretty good shape. Uh, it would have been hard for, you know, Greg to catch me. Uh, and he ended up bogeying 17 actually. So I ended up winning by two. Um, unfortunately I didn't make the putt, which, uh, would have definitely sealed it, but it was the only putt I missed, uh, I guess inside of like eight or 10 feet all week. Um, but it was okay. I didn't need to make it as it turned out. Um, but it was a, but you didn't you didn't know that at the time though, did you? You you I mean at, at the time you're trying to make everything you're you think you don't know what's happening behind right. you and because you were not in the in the final final group. Right. I was in the third to last group, whatever that's called. Yeah. And um I had a one shot lead and, and Greg was on sixteen green uh when I was putting. Uh but for him, you know, to finish the last three holes one under was gonna be a tough feat. Uh seventeen was playing really hard. And 18 is pretty hard hold too, but um, I knew if I made it, I'd be two up, and it was going to seal it for sure. Uh, you know, once once he bogeyed 17, you know, I was in watching it, and I knew when he bogeyed there, and I had a two shot lead, unless a miracle happened for him, which miracles have happened against him quite a bit. Um, yeah. I was going to win, so um, it was it was pretty cool. It was something I'd been looking to achieve for a long time. 
Uh, and to do it, you know, really was a great, it was a relief in a way, but, uh, you know, obviously extremely happy to have won the U S open for sure. How does it, how does it feel though, to be part of, of the U S open lore? Because every, uh, clip package from that point on, uh, of the great U S open moments and even great golf moments, they, they you've got your tiger shots, you've got, uh, and, uh, Sergio, um, scissor kicking up the, up the fairway. We've got you running after your ball. Uh, any, any clip package has that shot. And, even as a casual golf fan who maybe only watches the majors, they're going to know you. They're going to know that shot. They're going to know the mustache. There's a lot about you that people know just from, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just from what, what people see in, in the replay. How does that, I, I can't imagine going back and seeing myself 20 years ago, doing something uh, miraculous and being played time and time again, year after year for every U S open. D- does it still give you chills and excitement to see that? Or, or are you over, do you have cush lash? Are you over yourself? <laughs> No, it's still exciting. You know, it's, it's a great memory, obviously. And, um, you know, it's nice to be remembered for something good. You know, some people remember for messing up or doing something bad. So it's, it's nice that it's on the positive end of it. And, and it, yeah, it's nice. You know, it, it seems, you know, almost every week somebody says something about the forward shot or the shot I had in us open. So it, it's, it's always a, a great memory. It's something that I've got in, in, in my head that, I can always draw on and think of, you know, that happened and it, it still gives me confidence to this day. And, uh, but it's cool. It's, it is a neat thing when people come up, up to me and say something about it. And, um, you know, hopefully that'll last forever. And, you know, if they keep showing it on TV, like they do, and in those clips, uh, I think people will remember it. So our, our question wasn't unique. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard it before, but that's okay. I don't mind talking about it. You know, I'll blame said, producer Shane for that, for that miss. Yeah. I'd rather uh, talk about my, that my, than something bad that happened. So I'm, I'm quite, <laughs> quite happy to talk about it. Well, let's see if we get a unique question from Mike. Go ahead, Mike. Let's, let's, let's uh, change topics. <laughs> Corey, uh, you started your golf career as a caddy. Um, how do you feel about the lack of caddy programs around the country today? Do you think that's something that needs to change uh, to help grow the game? Well, I think it, it, there are clubs that do have um, caddies. Um, you know, I think the most famous caddy program is probably the Evans Scholarship uh, that started in Chicago. Uh, it would be great to have more and more caddies and, and not just um, just to grow the game necessarily, but it would help. Uh, but just the values that golf has uh, and caddies, whoever's caddying will learn that. And, you know, most most caddies, especially if you have a program going, are going to be, you know, fairly young kids. You know, they'll be, you know, 13 to to 18 or so and you can teach kids a lot just by being around the golf course and you know how to behave you know not that all golfers behave perfectly but um (laughs) there's a lot of uh you know core values you know like the first tee has uh and and i'm sure the evan scholarship uh has values in there uh but obviously that you know they help people get get into school college and help educate kids as well um you know it's not a cheap thing you know so uh, it's more of probably a country club thing than, than a public course thing. But I would love to see more caddies. Um, I think it is it is a great way to expose people to the game. Uh, and as I said, most of them are kids. So I think it'd be great. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's tricky stuff uh, to, to get a, a group of people that would be at the club all the time caddying. Uh, but it, it definitely can be done. And, and you know, I've always loved when there's caddies out there, you can help them, you know, know, if they need advice or, you know, sometimes caddies can give the players, you know, life advice, let alone on the golf course advice too. So it works both ways. I'll tell you, uh, that's a great, great point that one of the, uh, lessons that I learned from a caddy, I was playing up at uh, sand Valley and, uh, this, this caddy, I I learned that caddies have a business and that they are business people and they are, they're always trying to, to make sure and the professional caddies that are at these courses, making sure that people know, that they go to other courses and, and, and loop as well. And this guy was going down to Florida uh, for the winter to play. And he gave me his business card, which was a ball mark. And I just thought that was so smart and, and so ingenious in, in that now I've got this ball mark with his name and his number and it says, it says pro caddy. I, I just thought that was, and the kid was like 24, you know, 23, 24. And, uh, but that, that he wanted to make a business out of it. And, and he said that he had a dream of, of kind of running this little, little caddy, 
uh, caddy corner in, in, in all parts of, of the United States. I, I thought it was fascinating, um, to, to hear because he loved the game so much. And, uh, you know, you don't find those younger kids that are going to be clubbing you and, and, you know, helping you with the, with the uh, yardages as much, you know, the pinpoint yardages, not that I need those. I mean, give me within 20 <laughs> yards of the flag. I'll be happy. <laughs> but, uh, I think it's a, I think it's a good, a good program. Um, for sure. You know, it we is. asked, we asked this a lot, Corey, of, of, uh, pro golfers that are on the show here. Um, G- Gary player, Mark Amira, others that have, that have been on the show. Um, so forgive me for the similar question, but what has changed about the game since you've been in it that you love and what has changed that you wish hadn't? Well, I'll do the second one first. Cause that's the, that's an easier one. Probably, you know, I, I think, you know, the equipment has, it, it's always changing. It's always evolving and getting better. Uh, I'd say in the last 15, 20 years, the equipment has, you know, done a huge leap. Um, and, and it's made some golf courses a little obsolete, I guess. Um, you know, guys now are hitting it miles. You know, when I came out on tour, if you hit it 300 yards, I'm not even sure if anybody did hit it 300 yards when I first came out. Uh, granted that was a long time ago, but you know, there's always athletic prowess is always getting better. Uh, and, and the game's always evolving and changing. Uh, this last leap of equipment is a big one. Uh, you know, I, I'd love to see the ball be reined back. Uh, and that's not that hard to do. You can just get balls that spin more, uh, and that would take care of it. But, you know, it's a shame to see the golf courses have to, you know, put, you know, tees 40, 50 yards longer and sometimes longer than that, uh, to keep up with technology. Uh, not that, you know, it's, it's always going to change. It's always going to get better. Uh, but this last one was a, was about a triple leap, uh, from what it's done in the past. Um, what's better about the game now, you know, I think the, at least on tour, uh, the depth of, of how good the players are, you know, how I mean, you can go all the way down the line. It seems like anybody can win any week. Um, it probably wasn't like that when I first came out, it was a little harder to do that. Uh, but I love that there's so many young people that are trying to play professionally anyway. Um, I know the game's kind of leveled off a little bit with how many people play, but there's so many good players out there. Um, and that's great to see. Uh, it's great to see kids wanting to play golf and do it as a profession. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of that has to do with how much money's out there now. Uh, but it is nice to see the tournaments are more and more competitive. The, the tournaments, you know, they're more compressed. The scoring is way more compressed than it used to be. Um, you know, even to make a cut now is, is not yeah. an easy task. Um, you know, the, the cut line's probably, you know, been lowered two, three shots, four shots sometimes um, at events, you know, as opposed to 20, 30 years ago. So uh, that's a great part of the game that's changed. Um, and just, you know, things like the first tee program. Um, you know, the PGA of America has a program for juniors as well. You know, those are great changes. And um, I, like I was just saying a little bit earlier about caddies, you know, it's it's great for kids to learn, you know, core values. And you can do that with golf. And, and I, I see more of that happening and it can, can continue to get better and better. And, and it is, which is a great thing. Corey Pavin is a guest here on the Stick and Hack Show. What would surprise people about Corey Pavin? Your your acting ability, some, something else. What is what is it? What is something that people don't, don't know about you, Corey? For those for those of you who don't know, he was in Ten Cup. You had a massive major role in Ten Cup, right? Absolutely, Corey? massive, <laughs> massive. The speaking part, nonetheless. So, um, yeah, maybe bad acting, and not necessarily in the movies too. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't want to tell people something about me they don't know because it's probably <laughs> bad so um, there's, probably, there's probably a reason they don't know it <laughs> right exactly. you know i you know i, I think you know I, I definitely have a bit of a temper you know which you know i'll put that into competitive mm-hmm. spirit very good is that but um you know I, I when i was young uh, i had a really bad temper and and i had to really rein it in and try to use my emotions in a positive way as opposed to a negative way. So, um, I've tried to improve on that a lot and most of the time I do, but 
you know, we all regress once in a while. So, you know, there, there's times when I blow up on the course and get pretty mad. But uh, for the most part, I try to keep control of my emotions. So I, I don't know if that I do that. I do that weekly, Corey. So don't feel bad. I feel bad. I, I, I'm the same way. So, you know, there's certain, you know, things that you should, you know, have good <laughs> etiquette and that type of thing. So, you know, I never I never point my anger anywhere else but at myself. So, um you know, I, I've seen other people point it else, elsewhere, which is not not pretty. Um, and it's not pretty when I point it at myself sometimes, too. But maybe that's I'll just stick with that. <laughs> that's what we uh, we do here. We, we point our anger at Shane, producer Shane. Um, yeah, you, I, I've heard a lot about yeah, him. Well, I've heard it's, that. And it's, it's not good. It's not good. Um, <laughs> Corey Pavin is the guest uh, here on the Stick and Hack show. Corey, we're going to play a game called Stick or Hack here in just a second. Now, we're going to leave the, uh, the topic as a surprise for you. Uh, we're going go to go to break. We'll come right back here. Uh, you're sticking around for uh, Stick or Hack with Corey Pavin. That is next. Hang tight. We'll be right back. Stick and Hack brings you Coursework, a new and revolutionary golf training platform designed to provide any and every golfer at-home instruction. Coursework features a plethora of live and interactive courses, all taught by PGA professional instructors, including Adam Koloff, Jason Bale, Keith Stewart, and more. Go to coursework.stickandhack.com today to register for our courses and start the journey of revolutionizing your game. All right, we're back here at the Stick and Hack Show. Corey Pavin is a guest, uh, U.S. Open winner, uh, Ryder Cup captain, and now he gets to add to his resume. Uh, incredible guest here at the Stick and Hack Show, uh, Corey. Uh, so every uh, every show we play a game, and it's either in or out or stick or hack, and today is stick or hack. Um, so your nickname is um, – now. The, I want to tell you, Mike, how I got – Well, so, so stick, stick is like positive and hack is negative, right? Well, I mean, how are you doing? <laughs> so stick, stick is, is stick is like agreed. okay, that like like that's the real deal. He's he, there. Okay. That's something special. Hack is eh, okay. Okay, like All that's right, cute. Gotcha. Look at you trying to play golf. That's adorable, <laughs> right? Um, that's really how we we kind of look at this. So okay. I don't know how I got to this, Mike. Um, but sticker hack, and typically we have to we bring it back to the guest in some way. So uh, your nickname was Bulldog, and so then I started looking at at uh, sticker hack dogs that didn't make any sense because everyone loves dogs and what are we going to do there and then i thought uh then i thought to myself bullfighting that's a weird sport bulldog bullfighting weird sport sticker hack weird sports is the category okay all right here we go so uh you're cory you're going to be first then mike then myself okay so uh when i say the the weird sport you'll say if it's sticker hack pretty simple here we go uh bullfighting I'm gonna go hack. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go stick. Yeah, stick. He's fighting a bull. Yeah. What is not yeah, stick but, about that? Yeah. Well, I'm not a hunter. Just not, not as popular. Just it's probably just not. Say, it's yeah, not I'm as not popular. A hunter. Yeah. 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 I'm from California. Uh, I'm. I'm. You know. I'm a pacifist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, curling. Curling. Um. I'll go stick with that one. Yeah, yeah. stick for me. I stick. love curling, especially yeah. in the uh, in the Olympics. Yeah. So this is sticker hack weird sports. Uh, unicycle polo. <laughs> Are you making this up, or is no, this, I wish is I this was. a real sport? I wish I was. Unicycle I, polo. <laughs> to all the unicycle poloists out there, I'm gonna. I'm sorry, but I'm going. I, I'm going hack. Right. Yeah. Why hack. would you say anything else? Yeah, it's hack. hack. Not even close. <laughs> Wood chopping. So oh, you know, stick for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Mike? yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm crazy. There. Never, never make somebody angry that has an axe in their yes. hand. And and their profession is a wood chopping uh, professional. Uh, all right, so here's a, here's a good one. Stick Wait, hack. You chop wood too, though, don't you? When you play golf, I heard. Oh, yeah. that's, you're the one who said that. <laughs> absolutely. That's, that's absolutely. Well, you're true. the one who said it earlier that you're, you are you're a hack. bulldog. You are a bulldog. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm not a nice person. Sticker hack. Weird sports slaps. Have you seen this on ESPN? Oh Andy? yes, slaps. Yes. Um, can I say stack? <laughs> <laughs> You're the first person ever. Yes, you can. Something's appealing Here. about it, but something's not appealing about right. it. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm going. I'm going hack. I'm going hack with that one. I gotta go. I gotta go hack too. But it's it's. It's teetering. I agree with you, Corey. There has to be drinking involved in that yeah, sport. I you would imagine. Think. 
They're, uh, that's your, your local your local pub game slaps, uh, not the Olympic style. Uh, stick or hack weird sports cricket? Oh, stick for sure. Yeah, stick for me. No, hack. I don't understand. It makes no sense. It makes zero <laughs> sense to me. Uh, you're I, actually using well, a stick. Like, it has to be stick. Yeah. It makes no well, sense. Maybe it's, it's a gold. Um, I think it's a bat. Weird. Yeah, yeah it is a bat. bat. You don't know anything, Mike. It's a Whatever. bat. Same thing. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a bat that looks like a yeah, stick. See. Base jumping. Oof. I got to go with stick just because it takes a lot of guts to do that. Yeah, I think yeah. I'm, I'm in the same ball ballpark there. Then they have the wing suits, you know, they base jump yeah. and then they like yeah. fly through the air. Those guys are out yeah. of their mind. Squirrel. Yeah. Squirrel suit. Squirrel yeah. suit. You're right. Yes. yes. Base jumping is a stick. Yeah. Um, all right. Here's my favorite. Fast walking. It's an Olympic sport. Fast walk. It's, it's honest to God. Fast it is an Olympic, Olympic sport. sport. Uh, wow, that's a that's a tough one. But I'm just gonna go with stick because there's a lot of training involved in it. I I, I can't. I'm, I'm going hack. I gotta go. Hack. Oh, there is nothing. <laughs> just run. Just run. There's nothing point. sweeter than watching somebody trying desperately to not run and still going <laughs> 30 mile an hour. Oh my god! Stick. A lot of hip movement in yeah. that. Yeah. A lot of hip movement. Yeah. <laughs> it is a lot of upper body movement. Uh, okay, we got two more. Uh, triple jump. Stick for sure. Yeah, stick absolutely. Disagree wholeheartedly. Hack. <laughs> Just jump once. What are we doing? Why are we jumping a bunch? Jump one time. You're, <laughs> it, it's three. It's three times as hard. Yeah, exactly. With different legs and and they look like they're <laughs> like falling. It's ridiculous. Hack. Well, why don't you try triple jumping and see how maybe what I will. you think? Maybe I, will. I think we should. I absolutely think we maybe should do that, can, Corey. Maybe you can record it and yes, put it on the will. show, you know, or something. Absolutely. Like that. That's happening now. Maybe I will. That is me. Not I would like to have that video. <laughs> let, me, let me make sure I understand this. I'm going to dedicate my life to uh, to not getting any better at golf, but to mastering mm. the triple jump because Corey Pavin said so. <laughs> Good luck. Thank I you. love it. Thank you. Uh, all right, last one. Sticker hack, weird sports, toe wrestling. Ooh, I, I I don't know if I've ever seen it, but I, I'm just on principle saying hack. Yeah, I don't even believe this is real. Feel free to Google it. <laughs> hack. Feel free to Google. Hack. I don't want to. I don't. There's nothing it's about awful. that that I want to Google. It's awful. I do not want to Google that at I all. I did it. Not not toe wrestling. I've never sure toe wrestled did. in my life, but I Googled it to see. <laughs> sure you to did. Make sure it was real. <laughs> all right, so hack. So we're all on the same page there. There he is, Corey Pavin. <laughs> he just made it through his uh, the Stick and Hack Show unscathed. The Bulldog, Corey Pavin. Uh, thank yeah. you, sir, so much for the, for the time today. It was great talking to you. Uh, continued success there in the Champions Tour, and uh, just a, just a real honor to have you on the program. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had fun, and you will get a video from us with me triple jumping. I would say within the next month or so. All right, don't you worry. Yeah, do it before do it before winter happens. There, okay. we, we we will indeed. All right, everybody, that's the Stick and Act show, the great, possibly the greatest golf show in the world from the greatest golf club in the world. Without the course, go to stickandact.com, become a free member today, and watch your cha- your your life change and your golf game change right before your eyes. Uh, member perks, clubhouse, as well as our coursework, our live and interactive training, all on stickandact.com. Become a member today for free. We'll see you soon, everybody. Take care. Okay, we're done. This has been the Stick and Hack Show. Go to stickandhack.com to become a free member of the world's greatest golf club without the course.